What's going on everybody, I'm Michael Anthony. Thank you for checking out my article in this month's Shutter Magazine. In this month we were talking all about reasons why you should use creative lighting. Now, if you guys have been following my articles, I've been writing them for the last five years for this magazine. I have done a lot of articles on the different reasons why you should use creative lighting. But today specifically, I wanna talk to you about the client experience and how creative lighting will tie into that. There are two reasons why people opt either to use flash or not to use flash. It's either technical knowledge or branding. Those are really the two reasons why people opt to have a style that incorporates lighting or it doesn't. And I'm really more specifically talking about the natural light photographer, right? And, uh, and when you hear that term, if, if you haven't already, if you're newer to photography, uh, in the photography industry, there are natural light photographers. And kind of like the ongoing um, joke in our industry, which I, I don't agree with, is that if you're a natural light photographer, it's because you don't know how to use flash. And that's not true, okay? In reality, there are a lot of people who know how to use flash, but they prefer a brighter or more ethereal look to their images, and those people do it for the branding purposes, right? But then you have some people who are starting and they use natural light, and they're like, my photos never look the way that I want them to look, um, but I don't really know how to use flash. Flash intimidates me. I don't wanna get out there with my clients and make, a, make, make mistakes or create something that they don't necessarily like. And those are the people that fall into that technical category where they're not comfortable with using additional equipment. So for those people who are in that category, right, I just wanna let you guys know that um, Flash is not very hard to use and it's getting easier and easier. There are a variety of resources out there that can teach you how to use Flash quickly, like Shutter Magazine, but we're not gonna get into that right now. I really wanna talk more to the other people, the people who like the way that natural light looks, okay? so. If you're on location and you are photographing a scene in natural light, let's just say there is a tree, if I'm the photographer, there's a tree behind me right now and you are standing in front of the most amazing background. However, that tree right there is blocking the, the ambient light from getting into my subject's eyes and instead we are just lighting them in open shade from top down, creating shadows right in this area right here. Well, that is a situation where flash can really help you. Now, I want you to understand, to my natural light photographers out there, you do not have to sacrifice your branding for using good light on your subjects. In this very instance right here, you could take a softbox, get it further away from your subject to allow it to spread out and fill that scene evenly, and just add a little bit of light into your subject's eyes, measure that with your ambient light ratio, 50 to 40% or 55 to 45%, and you're gonna have very natural light looking images even though you're using flash, and that is gonna make sure that you guys are not tied down to the location that you are working in. So no matter who you are, if you're a wedding or a portrait photographer, oftentimes you're gonna be working in environments that you don't have control over the entire scene or, or the entire um, look of where you're shooting, right? So using creative lighting can help you to exceed your client's expectations when you are in a situation like that. Let me explain what I'm talking about, right? If I'm out on location in front of a beautiful building in midday, we're gonna have a very bright scene, that's, that background is gonna be just as bright as the light that's on my subject at, at any given time. However, if I underexpose my background now by like two stops, retain all the highlights in the scene, bring a flash in and I light my subject, I am putting the spotlight or the focus directly on them like if they were in a theater and the spotlight is shining on them, right? Now when I do that, they come in to see these pictures, that image is gonna be on display on the TV when they walk into my studio, and the clients are gonna look at it and they're gonna say, wow, didn't look like that on the day, that's amazing. I didn't really see what you saw, right? And that's exactly what you want. You want to exceed your client's expectations and make sure that they are looking at you as a professional because let's face it, right? Every single year, more and more photographers enter the market, which means there's more competition for you to stand out. In addition to that, the education resources are getting better and better. So photographers are getting better at a crazy rate of speed right now, which means that you have to do things to be able to stand out. And it's not gonna come from just say, using flash now, it's gonna come from using flash correctly to do to accomplish the look that is in your head and make consistently beautiful photos because more often than not now clients are looking at an entire body of work as opposed to just an individual image. So that's all I got for you guys today. For more tips on how to use creative lighting or why you would wanna use creative lighting, make sure you check out my article in Shutter Magazine. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I can't wait to catch you guys next month in Shutter Magazine.